Welcome everyone to the channel. I'm going to give a quick outline of what uh, I'm going to be doing. Um, so if this isn't the video for you, you can skip now, but basically I'm going to be making it so that any child widget can be scrollable vertical and horizontal. And you might have this issue because you very well might have a widget or an image that is overflowing with inside your page. So this is pretty much what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be outlining uh, and giving three examples of how you can actually wrap this in a vertical and horizontal scroll view. And you might have something like this, which is a data table that needs to scroll both horizontally and vertically, depending on how many columns and rows you create and how many you generate within your list that might overflow from the left and from the bottom. So this is basically it, check it out. This is what we're gonna be doing as well as the image. And I'm going to be giving three examples of how we can do this. Um, you might also find some videos online. A lot of the YouTube guides are simply doing something like this where you can scroll both horizontally within a single row in a list view. However, you cannot scroll uh, both the widgets. Um, vertically and horizontally they will only go left or they'll go up and down and we're going to be doing that into one widget but if you are looking to scroll just one row horizontally within a list view um, then I'm going to be leaving uh, links in the description below where you can follow these channels and go watch their tutorial on how to exactly do that all right so jumping into the examples this is all the code I'm going to be calling uh, the pages via my main um, under home, but you will most likely be doing it under a root or uh, a navigator.push, but we're essentially going to be going to these stateful widget pages, and I have created one under horizontal and vertical. Uh, something I want you to note is that it can be stateful or stateless, so you're in luck. <laughs> you don't have to change your code that much, um, but you will need a list view uh, which has a child of a center and a container with specified width and height. This is very important because you are basically creating the background length uh, horizontally and vertically in which um, your widget can scroll in. You would want to set the width high um, and the height high if your program starts crashing or giving errors that it can't uh, render in. Uh, or the pixels are overflowing, just change the width and height under your list view under center container. It's basically taking the surface level of this and saying we are going to create a container behind it. Um, and if you didn't have it in the list view, it would overflow. So after you have put your container in, you're going to make a child that centers another list view. And here's the important juicy part. You need to make the scroll direction axis horizontal. Uh, by default, the list view is axis vertical. Uh, therefore, we are utilizing both the vertical and the horizontal properties of the list view without them overlapping. Um, so in the list view, we are going to have children. And this is basically where you're gonna put your widget. The widget that you came here for, <laughs> you are gonna put under this axis horizontal list view and for instance I have right now a container I've set it with a height and a width that should be under or smaller than the height and the width of your top level parent container and I'm just going to uncomment a data list that I created and if we hot restart you can essentially put any other widget there and it should work 100% so jumping into example number two, we have put it under a stateless widget, but it is your lucky day. If you have a stateful widget, it will also work. So going into the code, you're going to need a list view, a center and a single child scroll view with a scroll direction of axis horizontal. Here we will be placing our child, which is also most likely the child that you want horizontally or vertically scrollable. Um, and if we just now set this to our page and we hit the hot restart button, it should have all the functionality that example one has. And here we go. 
Also, just to give another example, you can indeed use a different type of widget as well, just for proof in the pudding. Let's put it here and let's put our data table in as well. And boom, chada bing, hot restart. And here we go, it's also working. All right, so let's get into example number three. We have also put it under a stateful widget and you are going to simply need, look at this, wow, even less lines of code, interactive viewer. You're going to need to set the constraint to false. Uh, that is just gonna stop it from being static and still. Um, and here you are going to be placing your widget. Um, I want to also let you guys know that both for example two and both for example three, if you have a container, you are going to need to specify a height and a width. Um, and if we just take our horizontal vertical three, we put it here and we hot restart, we will also have the same functionality that comes with it. Um, and I'm also just going to take this out, take this, boom, bada bam. And we have something like this as well, which is quite nice. If this video really helped you out, please hit a like, a subscribe, and maybe leave a comment. It does make my day. And trust me, these videos actually take hours to edit, upload, and make. I stumble with my words so much after remake these things. If you want to join along and get some nice helpful programming guides in the future, uh, why not hit the subscribe? And Vasidanya, have a great day.